What is up, beautiful people? Kirby Hossman here, trying to deliver you just a little bit more marketing joy. And today I'm going to be talking to you about 10 ways that I have seen great organizations improve employee retention. Um, you know, one of the challenges I think that all of us have, if we want to have a great organization, is we, we need to have great people. And so we're going to talk today about what I've seen, what we have done, but then what I've seen other organizations do to improve employee retention, keep your team together, build that culture and do great things with your organization. Now, if this is providing you any value, please feel free to subscribe wherever you are watching or listening. It would really mean the world to me. And of course, if you could rate the podcast or rate the video, that would be awesome. It will help more people find these, uh, this, these content, these videos, these podcasts, that sort of thing as well. So would really appreciate that. So I want to dive into sort of 10 things. Well, that's five, 10 things <laughs> that I've seen great organizations do to improve employee retention. Now, again, I always like to address the um, sort of the elephant in the room and you're saying, hey, you own a marketing company. Why are you talking about employee retention? Um, and part of it is because we have tended to serve a lot of folks in the human resources space. The two audiences that we work with the most are people who are trying to do marketing and then trying to do HR. And so this is one of the lessons learned, not only from 20 years in business, believe it or not, but also from great organizations who I look at and admire and I've sort of seen. So we're going to dive into those 10 things that I've seen people do to improve employee retention. Number one, New employee onboarding, having some sort of program that isn't just like, hey, welcome to the team. Here's your stuff. Go do whatever you need to do. Um, some sort of employee onboarding that really not only makes them feel welcome, but makes them feel like they know what the heck they're doing. I think so many organizations and it's because they're trying to hire so fast. So uh, this is not a judgment. It's just, you know, sometimes what you need to do is you get somebody, you get them in the seat and say, here's what you do, go. Um, I find that the best organizations have some sort of onboarding plan. Now that might be, okay, um, we're going to make sure that they have gone through the whole manual. They really know what they're doing. Then we have a week of training. There's, there's different steps of what that might be. But the other two things I've seen people do is to create a new employee onboarding kit. Something, yes, it has to do with merch because what people forget is when you're a new employee, you're like the new kid in high school. Like everybody else knows everybody. There's clicks already established. There's, uh, you know, everybody sort of speaks the same vernacular. They know everything. And by simply providing folks you know, a shirt with the logo on it, maybe a cup with the logo on it, some, some things that maybe a pen and notepad to do their job. It makes them right away feel at least a little bit more a part of the team on that first day. The other thing I've seen people do is they, they uh, assign a mentor, uh, a buddy right away that, that kind of is it's their job. It's Bob's job to make uh, Mike feel a part of the team right away. Here's where everything is. Here's where the lunchroom is. Here, here are the you know the things to look look for. Um, assigning that buddy can really improve that new employee onboarding, and it will help people stay because they feel a part of the team right away. Number two, the fact of the matter is. Um, everybody wants to be appreciated. As a matter of fact, I think that businesses know that they're supposed to show appreciation for their customers. We don't always get it right when it comes to our employees. There's a great study I talk about a lot that says that 69% of customers that leave you leave you because of perceived indifference. Well, of course, your employees are going to feel the same way if they don't feel appreciated. So one of the things that I like to recommend is doing some sort of quarterly appreciation program, whether that's getting everybody together for a pizza. Um, I like to do some sort of branded merch, of course, because it not it again, it continues to build that team, that tribe, that, that group of people together when they see people wearing the same merch. Um, they, you know, they do feel a more a part of the team. And then the fact of the matter is it does have lasting power with your brand. Um, so, you know, when you give there's nothing wrong necessarily with gift cards um, and that sort of thing. And that's fine, but they go away really quickly and they're not remembered. So I like doing something where every quarter you're getting in front of your customers, just, or excuse me, your employees, just to show how much you appreciate them. And if you are going to go above and beyond, I think fourth quarter is the place that it does make sense to do that. But I think some organizations only do end of year. End of year is important. I'm going to talk about that in about two seconds, 
But I think that if you are only doing it once a year, that's problematic. So some sort of quarterly appreciation program is a really big deal. Number three, like I said, is the, the final, the end of year, the holiday gifts, the Christmas gifts, whatever you want to call it. If you're going to go above and beyond, this is the time that you're going to make a bigger deal. You may have the, the big holiday party, make a show of how much um, that you do appreciate those people. And this is the place where I think um, that gift cards become the thing. Well, I'm just going to do gift cards. And there's a couple things that are a problem with that. Number one, you know, you, there is no staying power. I mentioned that. Uh, number two, it, it, A, it, sometimes it just never gets used, but even if it's cash, it's going to be forgotten. I think this is just, I'm picking, um, I'm picking on it a little bit, but I think it's important to note that I like to have something with, um, staying power. Um, I believe that when you do a really cool gift, it does help to build the culture. And then finally, you know what? Uh, if it's cash, they have to claim it, right? Especially after a certain number. So now it's not necessarily a gift, it's an obligation. So I think it, while I think a gift card or that sort of thing can be a part of that gift, I think it should only be a part of that. I, I think that you should build in some sort of tangible reminder of how much you appreciate them. So that's number three. Number four, the best organizations I know that build teams and cultures that really matter have some sort of purpose, some sort of give back, some sort of mission. Um, it not only um, kind of rallies the, the troops and says, hey, we're going to do this thing and we're going to make a difference, which I think is good. But I think it does another thing is that it attracts the, the kind of people that you want and it repels the people that you don't want, right? Um, when people who care about the mission that you and your organization care about, you tend to attract those kind of people to work with you because they, you see them or they see you in the community doing the kind of work that they want to be a part of. So having some sort of purpose, um, give back or mission can be a big, big deal. Number five, a pay structure evaluation. Now, one of the things I say is, and you know, we're a, a small organization and we're probably never going to be the highest paying organization in our area, but we want to be somewhat competitive. People do need to be able to uh, live. And so I think there are plenty of ways out there where you can kind of do um, pay evaluation, kind of look to make sure you're at least in the market. Obviously, if you want to be the highest paying in your area, your, your um, industry, that's huge. And I think that can be a huge benefit to attracting and retaining talent. But I, I think some people lean so heavily on this that they forget about some of these other things. So you need to be in line um, because if we can't pay our bills as employees, we're not going to be able to do our best work at work. Next up, training and growth. I think that if you want the kind of um, employees that are going to do the best work for you, they're going to be looking for ways to grow and do better work for you. Uh, you want to have training and growth opportunities for them. Um, so looking at ways for um, whether you do it internally, whether you invest externally in that training and growth, there are so many organizations out there that really do a great job of helping you level up your employees. And let's face it, one of the things I've said is, you know, we live in a world where learning has never been less expensive, but education has never been more expensive. Um, um, and so I think understanding that giving your permission, your uh, and team and your employees permission to go and seek out that uh, learning on company time where you're paying them to do it is really, really powerful. You know, one of the things that they say is if, if you're afraid to train your employees because they might grow and leave, boy, be very afraid if they are stagnant and then they want to stay, right? So um, I literally just had this conversation at our office uh, today. Uh, one of my uh, employees was like, hey, I've been working really hard. I'm caught up. And they kind of freaked out. They're like, have I worked myself out of a job? And I'm like, no, now's the time. Here are a couple of places you can go to for your specific job and your specific job title. Here's where you can go to educate yourself. You have permission to dive into that all day today and make yourself better. Um, so investing on that, that training and growth is another uh, really important thing. A health and wellness program. Of course, we um, do the total wellness program. We're very proud of that. But, you know, health and wellness programs not only lead to healthier employees, but more productive employees, you know, and healthy and, and uh, mentally healthy employees should be enough reason. But the fact of the matter is that's not it. They're more productive. Um, I'm going to read this because Harvard researchers have found that every dollar spent on employee wellness 
medical costs fell by $3.27 and absenteeism dropped by $2.73. So that's a six to one return on that dollar of investment. And so that's a really, really powerful um, way to not only make your team stronger, like literally physically stronger, but also to improve the bottom line as well. So um, those kind of things are also can be great culture builders, right? Because if you do specific merch around the event, then um, then they kind of see, oh, you're a part of the, the wellness program too. We're all reaching towards specific goals and you can kind of build culture within the culture. And I think that's really powerful. Um, next up, employee merch, right? Build the brand. Like we, you can always tell, I, I believe you can always tell an organization where the people really love to work at that organization because they wear the merch outside of work, right? One of the things that I talk a lot about is, you know when a, a brand has really been built is when um, like Harley Davidson or Apple or Nike or whatever, where um, people, their customers are um, willing to pay to wear their logo. They're willing to pay to wear the merch because they've created such a culture and what I always call enthusiastic brand ambassadors that they're willing to dive in and spend their own money to promote them because they, they're signaling to other people, look, this is something that matters to me and this is something I care about. Man, isn't that what we want from our best employees? Isn't that what we want, the kind of culture we wanna build internally? And if they're not willing to tell that story, how could anybody outside be willing to tell that story? So um, being willing to invest in really cool employee merch so that they're proud to carry it um, and proud to tell your story. They can be your most enthusiastic uh, brand ambassadors. And so don't um, sleep on that. And, and as a side note, and again, you can take this with what I'm saying. I do merch. So you can take what I'm saying for a grain of salt, but this is not the time to go cheap, gang. This is the time to invest in the t-shirt that they want to wear every time. The piece of drinkware that really, really has high quality, a great imprint because they want to be proud not only to represent your brand, but to carry the merch. Otherwise it'll do you no good. Next up, uh, mental health tools. Like the example I say is, have you ever worked with somebody who's going through a divorce? Like they're not doing their best work for the most part for six months or 12 months, because it's just such a difficult thing to go through. And I think when we think of divorce, we're like, oh yeah, that's really difficult. But the fact of the matter is some of your team members are probably going through difficult times, whether you know about it or not. And I find that some of the best organizations really make space for that, whether they have uh, counselors that they provide, whether they um, just provide the space for people to talk about things, um, having tools in place um, so that um, employees feel safe and um, really uh, valued. That is certainly one of the ways that we do feel valued. And the fact of the matter is if we feel safe, if we feel strong, we're going to do our best work for the organization. And then finally, service award programs. The best organizations recognize those people who have been with them for a long time. When we started this conversation, we're like, we want to build a great culture. We want to build a great team. This is about employee retention. And so having some sort of program where you consistently recognize those people who are doing great work over long periods of time is it's just such a great investment. When you think about the time and the energy and the, the, the manpower that you have to put into it to rehire and retrain somebody, if you have somebody there who's been working there five years, keeping them is so valuable to the organization. Now, the one thing I will say, even if you've already done this, um, I'm seeing, and, and you probably have seen this in um, the world today, is attention spans are getting shorter. People are jumping jobs quicker. So I believe it's important to recognize that, um, show that appreciation for service quicker than ever before, whether that's six months in or three months in or nine months in, don't wait to five years because they won't make it that long. So and having the new employee, that's the first thing I mentioned, a new employee onboarding thing helps with this. And then showing some appreciation that they've stuck around for the first six months. You don't have to spend a ton of money, but making a big deal about it as an organization can help people feel appreciated and want to stay. So whew, that's a lot. Consider this a checklist. Consider this a thing that you can kind of refer to and go, okay, we are doing pretty well over here, but how are we doing on this? There's uh, 10 different ways that I think that you can improve employee retention today.
So thank you so much for watching. If these are providing you any value, like I said, please feel free to subscribe and share with this, share this um, episode with somebody who might need to hear it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.